die young Push it to the limit, I can't go no more Red light, no way I'm coming back home Long dirt road all on my own I'ma be the greatest, draw my name in the stone Write my name in the stone Yeah, I'm coming back home Yeah, I'm coming back home Write my name in the stone Cause I'm coming back home Cause I'm coming back home Right back where I left because I know my people needed me Diamond in the rough, I don't know what it is they see in me Go down as a legend in my city Cause we beat the streets Trying to spread the wealth around the block No, I can't keep from it So Master Silvio Baring, that's that's my coach, my team. I know you you train with him a lot. How did you guys hook up? How did you guys get together? Man, Silvio was a Master Silvio was a blessing in my life. Let's go back in time a little bit. I remember 20 years ago, uh, a friend of mine met Master Coleta and Mario Reis in San Diego. Right? And this, this guy, and they were trained at Rodrigo Medeiros School, BJJ Revolution. And because usually there, there was a lot of guys from the South that used to go to San Diego to compete or just enjoy San Diego. And the, you know, Rodrigo Medeiros was the best school at the time. It's still the best school there. Um, and so the guys would go there. And I was, you know, every time I was in California or I was, I live in Santa Barbara at the time and I was going to San Diego at the time. It was amazing to see all those, those guys training there. And I was, you know, training there. And I met this, you know, I become a good friend of this guy. He was a white, actually I was a friend of his father, Buffalo Bill. And then, so Brandon, his son came to Brazil and he said, listen, they're going to be the world championship. And I want to see my friends, Mario, Hayes and Coleta, they're going to Silver Bad, and I didn't know Silver. So I went to this school, and I was already a black belt. So, and I saw this method. I remember that was really, really clear for me. He had a, I'm not sure if it was a Shinai or the belt, and he was doing this, and you have to come in and catch. And those, that class was very different from any class that I saw in my life before. There was no, like, a structure, like, okay, let's stretch, let's do warm up, let's do technique, let's spar. There was, there was different. Right, come in here, boom, let's do this. Blah, blah, blah. It's like, okay, guys, go train now. No, stand up, let's do this, let's self-defense now. So there was very kind of, you know. A good flow to it. Good flow, but yeah. it, it was not like a, like 90% 90, 90 of school was doing, like the stretch, like a bow, warm up, running, you know, jumping jacks, sit ups, push ups, techniques, take down, uh, you know, training. That was, you know, 99% of the schools in, in Brazil were doing that. But Silvio came with a completely different approach. Said, oh, interesting. And there was like a two hour and a half class. There was not like a, there was a lunch noon in Recreio dos Bandeirantes. Uh, hot as hell, <laughs> you know? And I was like, mm, interesting. But I felt, that, again, there was, I was not ready for that. I was not open. Maybe I was, I was not open to embrace that. So going back to, you know, 15 years later, so when I'm going back to when I reach him and I start talking to him on the phone, they will think what's up, what's up at the time. And I said, yeah, cool. I said, well, how does it work? No, we can, I'm going to be there for one, one week, Monday to Friday. And I said, okay, so I don't, I don't have a gym. I teach at my business school at the time. And if you want to come, I have available every day, 7 a.m. in the morning. That was in Recreio dos Madenantes. I was in Copacabana in Ocar. What, how am I gonna do to make it happen? But I said, listen, and that's a, a talk, talk about motivation, talk about the vote, discipline, or desire to learn. So I said, well, all right, no problem, I rent a car. So the first class he had, it was a Monday, and it was like a, I assumed there was be a one hour class, become a two and a two something hour class. So, I mean, I was taking notes and I kind of, you know, and love, first of all, he kind of said, listen, there's not many guys in your level, your knowledge, your rank, that come and reach and come like, you know, uh, with open heart to learn a technique. Most of the guys that I see, they're coming, they're blue belts, they're purple belts, they come in, you know, to seminars and come to reach. And those black belts, they come with a kind of, with a critical side. They don't really embrace that. They really say, listen, let's, what, what, what should I do? They want to try just to take a little bit to their game yeah. and to improve their game. Season their game. Yeah. Right? And in my case, I was listen, I'm a white belt again. How, let me understand your system. So from that day, I mean, 
Mark Silver become, you know, one of the most influential people in my life. You know, in, when I have a problem, like a personal problem, I call him sometimes. If I have a school problem, I call him. You know, even being part of a different school. Uh, actually, Silvio was one of the founders of Alliance Tours, to put it that way, because he started teaching with Fabio, or they had started together, but you know, as a business, it didn't work well, but they're still friends. But uh, when Fabio moved to Sao Paulo, Silvio was, was, his, was t their teacher together. Uh, Fabio and Gigi, all those guys, they used to come to Silvio school to help to see the, the class, when they call a belt, Silvio was a black belt. So, you know, Master Silvio was, a, you know, one of the best structures that I ever met in my life, you know, and the, one of the best person that I met in my life. Very, you know, firm, honest, you know, down to earth, you know, and, and he become one of my best friends, believe it or not. So, and so when my partners passed, he was the one that carried, you know, the, the cast with me. Really? You know? Oh yeah. He was there like, you know, uh, every time I needed, that was a, I had a situation like a couple years, like a year ago here, that I have, you know, some instructors left, you know, for for because the family thing, so they have, they, I end up need to hire new people to work with us, and most of them they didn't have enough experience. So I pick up the phone and I say, I call him Silvio, it's a master Silvio, but I call him Silvio to do a, a, our personal relationship, and I say Silvio, I have a problem here, I need your help. I said, what's up? And I said, and I told him, I have three new instructors here. They have limited, in, you know, knowledge in teaching. They were big good fighters. They're good, good people, but I need them to kind of give a shock. And, and I said, all right. So when you when you need it, I said, when can you come? I said, well, there was like a Tuesday, and he said, oh, I'm coming back. I'm in Porto Alegre right now, and I'm coming back on Friday. I said, can you come on on on, on Saturday? I said, wait, wait, let's spend the, the weekend with my, with my family. Can I, I say? Monday. So Tuesday morning he was here, right? And he was here for about, you know, 10, a week or 10 days, something like that, to help out, you know, with our, you know, put my instructors in line. Yeah, yeah. Right? So now. So now. And he was very lucky as well, because, you know, Lucas is my head coach here. Uh, when Lucas came in from Brazil, they live in the same house, the same apartment for 45 days. Because he was here, he was based here in Miami, he was flying to Canada, to, to, uh, to, uh, to Idaho, to California. He was doing his serious seminars, but his base was here. So here for a week, three days, someone else come back, or one week there, five days a year. So Lucas got access. So Lucas, remember, you know, uh, telling me like, uh, the middle of the night, Luke, uh, Silvio was like in time zone, whatever, not watching, watch TV and Lucas was like, hey, come on, hey, come here, son, come here, let me try something here. And kind of, you know, like, <laughs> did some kind of, you know, base thing, you know, checking on Lucas and all that stuff. And not only the technique itself, but attitude of being a good instructor, the mission, what you stand for, right? So I think part of the success that we have here, it's on Master Silva as well, through me, and through Lucas, so I, I always want him to be around me. And I told him, I don't want to, and I already gave him a responsibility because Master João Alberto was the one that gave me the fourth and my fifth degree and, and hopefully give me, he keep guiding me, you know, through the next ones. But of course, he's already, uh, you know, his 80s and nobody's be here forever. But I told you, Silvio, you are the, <laughs> you are the next in line. I'm sorry to put this responsibility on my shoulder, <laughs> but I have to carry this curse. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. That's great. No, he's he's been the same way for our team. I mean, you won't meet a more generous and, yeah, and loving true. guy, but also honest as could be. You know, yeah. if you're if you're messing up, or he's gonna tell you. Oh yeah. You know, he's he's gonna be fair. He's gonna put you put you on the spot. No problem. But you no know, problem. he loves you, so it's yeah. easy to take. You know what I mean? It's not. That's why we 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 love him, right? That's right. Exactly. We 100%. need we need this 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 kind of attitude in our lives. And I think the, su the success or what we, we are sharing is the influence that we had in our past through our instructors and the people that surround us. So you like to have him always around, you know, and then... Can't ever take that for granted. No. Right? Make sure up. you keep sharing that same philosophy. That's right. Keep passing it down. 
don't let it die, you know? So very cool. So I know for you, competition is still, it's still a big part of your life. You're pretty actively competing, um, you know, being 45 years old, how different is your training today versus 20 years ago when you were competing? I mean, are you more on the training for the technical, mental side of things? Do you still push it pretty physically hard? Or, you know, where do you kind of find that balance these days? Life is comp competition all the time, right? You're competing against someone else for a place in a, you know, for a promotion maybe, or you're competing against the best version of yourself from yesterday. Right? So we always try to do something better. So we always try to push yourself, you know, to give the to, to become a better person every single day. I don't want to go back. I just want to go forward. Sure. But you have to understand the limitations. Right? As we get older, my performance, the intensity and the quality that I put on my competition is not the same. I don't expect that to do a show like Bushesha, like move like Bushesha. Right? I need to move like Rodrigo. And what type of Rodrigo? Rodrigo better than yesterday, right? So that's, that's why. I try to keep it healthy as possible. So I try to eat properly. I try to get enough sleep. And I try to get a, you know, a good and a positive mindset in life. Life is too hard, too short. If you keep complaining about all the problems that you have, trust me, I go downhill. But if you always have something, man, how can I do better? What, what, how can I, you know, improve myself your life is going to be much 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 happier much easier much easier to deal right so that's that's the mentality that i put on so in terms of competition i want to win you know if you, there's two type of people the people that go there to participate and the people that got to go there to win the people who go there to win they got gold medals the people who go there to participate they may they may get a podium yeah. so when i go to competition i go to win and I want to be on my best. And to be on my best, it does, it's not like, a, okay, if I'm going to have competition six months, I'm going to start training now. No, I started training 20, 30, 31 years ago. Yeah. I'm just going to polish a little bit to the next competition, you know, in three months or, or one, one month or two weeks or, or six months. I'm already planning, which I have on, on, on a spreadsheet, my training, which my team, I have a group of, 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 of professionals that work with me. For the competition that's going to be six months from now, seven months from now. Where are you planning on that? My diet, my, the cycle of, of physical condition you're going to do, the type of training you're going to do, the type of partners that I have, the part of, uh, of uh, uh, training, the wrestling coach, the judo coach, you know, my jiu-jitsu partners, my physical coach, nutritionists, everything is being together for, for, the, for the next one. So yes, competition is, you know, uh, it, it, it's, it's still part of my life. I love it, right? And for myself. My students is a different thing, you know, but for myself, I really enjoy it. But it's separate from my students. I do this on lunchtime, yeah. you know, which the approach is different. It's more brutal. It's more painful, right? And not everyone can take it. Yeah. Everybody wants it, but not everybody can take it, That's right. right? When you see the fingers, when you see, you know, the, you know, the, the little bruise on the face, you know, a little bl blood that comes off your mouth, a little injuries that you have to deal with, you know, the recovery, right? They give up, like, you know, you have to give up. Like, I remember it. sometimes the competition, it's an important competition, it's the same weekend at my daughter's birthday. What are we gonna do? We can may change the celebration, but I can be, I can change the tournament date, right? So. Those kind of, you know, those kind of decisions have to be made. And also the commitment around you. So the commitment that I have with myself, with my family, because I'm going to be gone for quite a while. Traveling to compete, training, you know, not be able to attend all the social events that my family expect me to do it. And also the mental game to myself to fight against uh, my own fears and you know, to present myself in a, in, a, in a best version. And one thing that I did in the past that kind of frustrated me, I was fighting for my students. Oh, my students are gonna be proud of me. That was the worst mistake. My performance was not good. When I say, you know what, man, look, I'm gonna lose. I, I lie. <laughs> I'm gonna lose, right? So expect me to lose the tournament. If I win, it's just a plus. And luckily, 
I've been, I, I have more, you know, the last 10 years I've been, I have more wins than, than loss. Yeah, been, been fairly successful from it's what been, I've seen. I've been happy. Great. Yeah. I've been happy, you know, on this journey. That's good. I, I'm sure at, at this point in your life, I mean, what, 50, 51 years of training since you were four years old? 50, you know, no, 41. Ford, sorry. <laughs> I don't have a long week. I don't have little, enough. Little I have a, too much sun. <laughs> too much sun. It's hot out. Yeah. 41 years of training. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I'd imagine happiness plays a big part in the continuance of that stuff, right? If you weren't enjoying it, you wouldn't be doing it. You know. Yeah, I, that was. Uh, and I, my now, my main, my main, uh, my main desire right now is to get my students. Uh, you know, not with medals, with a better version of themselves too. I mean, be a, be a tool, instrumental for them to become better, right? So, they will have a group of master guys, you know, a little older guys, you know, based on demographics that the city that we live, uh, they are really excited about the youth, right? And there was a, I, I ever wrote a article, you know, last year about it. There was a guy here, CEO of one of the, you know, billion dollar company, right? So he saw me competing, saw, you know, Lucas, competing and then so the hey professor can I do this tournament and I, and I said let me think about it so then I you know I talked to Lucas, hey, Lucas what do you think and I said well I think he can do you know let's give it a try why not and I was thinking and then I came back home and I was thinking man this guy runs a billion dollar company how can I say no to this guy no you can't so it, I, I, I told him, listen, this is what you gotta do. You gotta come three times a week, minimum. If you miss, you, you, you cannot do it, right? And you gotta show me, hire someone, it don't have to be my, mine. Hire someone to take care of your physical conditioning, and I want you to, you know, high nutrition, and get a nutritionist, get, fix your diet. Get a, you know, yeah. eat better. Deal? Shook hands. And, but again, I can make a decision to take your name off the competition you know, the week before. I agree on that? Yes. Shook hands, both right now. He got second place in the Pan Ams. Right? The other one, I have to make another deal. He was a little overweight. And I told you, and, I, and he told me, can I compete? And technically, probably he was not ready for a competition. But you know what I told him? Okay, you have to drop this amount of weight. It's not because I want him to get, you know, physically strong. Just because there was extra, he would be healthier if he, he if he would if he lost that, those pounds. And he said, "Okay, deal." She got third place. And then again, that was better better than any gold medal. Yeah, just to see that. You know, his wife. You know, when his wife comes to me and, and it's like, "You changed my husband," and give me a hug, because he was lazy, he was overweight, he was depressed. And now he's like, you know, he has fun, he helps the kids class and everything. So, you kidding me? This is a good battle. I don't want bronze, I don't want, you know, silver. I, I just want that, you know? Yeah. Those guys, like, I, you know, we had a competition yesterday and he lost, one, one guy lost his two matches. You know what his son did? Put a picture, like a big post on Instagram, Dad, I love you, I'm, like, I'm so proud of you, I love you, you're my hero. Yeah, just for being there. Do I want a gold medal? No way. That's way better than anything. Yeah. So that's my motivation in terms of, you know, like, how can I do people better? It's not because, and I told, and, and, and this is what I, we, uh, I told them, listen, I don't care about the outcome. By coming here, you are my champions. Yeah. If you win, to be honest, it doesn't mean anything to me. Yeah, you it, all won just for showing up. I just up, want to right? show up. Putting in the work ahead of time. And we need that, you know, and I need that too. We had a competition, like a you know a fight to win competition. Me and Lucas were there. Like I was, Lucas competed like three matches before me. I was just before the the. I was one of the last last matches. Show Lucas was three before me, and like we we got an earlier. We got a training. Everything was ready. The training was perfect. We did everything as it used to be. I have to lose a lot of weight. I made weight the day before with no stress. I was ready. Slept well, have a good meal, went to the show, and I warm up. But I was so focused on Lucas' performance because was he was my right man, and I wanted him to do so good that I probably lost all my energy there. And then I remember because I was like, man, I'm tired now. When he was about to, when he 
And I, when he was about to go, I said, I'm tired. I'm mentally tired. So then uh, I told him, uh, when, if you see the video, it's funny because, and I was looking at him, when I saw all the ref raise the flags for him, I just, I didn't wait for his hand to be raised. I ran back to the, I ran back uh, to the, to the backstage. Because I said, you know what? I need to drink water. I need to go back to my, to concentrate. And then he came, he celebrated, he was happy, give kisses to, to, to the audience, came back and said, it's your time. He said, Lucas, I'm dead. I have zero energy because my adrenaline pff, killed my energy. And I said, I'm dead. I can't do it. A few, a few weeks, I want to sleep. And he said, man. And it was, I look, I look, I look at the, I could look through the stage there and I saw like we're about 20 kids. I mean, 20 kids, like 10 years old. Around, like, there was, there was a kid that was six years old. No, there was uh, another one that was five. He was there to watch me. And I said, I can't disappoint him. And I put myself in a, in, a, in a situation that was, I feel in that pressure again. I said, That's, <laughs> I don't feel comfortable there, but I have to deal with that, right? So I look back at him, man. I'll do my best. So, but look him to me and say, listen, man. Nobody trained more than you. Look at you. Nobody trained more than you. Just go there, enjoy. Do what you gotta do. Man, we train with me in a daily basis. You give a hard time to everyone. Just do it. Just do your job. Man, from like, I wouldn't say I would give up, but I, my, my body was physically shut down. My mind was shutting down and I need that influence in my head to kind of, you know, poof, put that extra pressure. I, you know, I finished my match in a minute and a half. <laughs> you know, with a tough guy, don't get me wrong. And I need that. And I, so when I saw the kids, I kind of, that was really nice. And I will do it again. Yeah. I'll be again. So we the match. Well, you know, with our, our films, our brand, the one more, I mean, that's what it's all about, right? You gotta, you gotta have it in you or find it within you or from an outside source to always push one more time, right? One more wet rep, one more set, one more roll, one more competition. And obviously you got it, so. It's awesome, man. I appreciate you uh, taking the time to sit down and talk with us today. And uh, it's been an excellent, excellent weekend here. So thank you for being such a fine host. And yeah, thank man. you for everything. Much appreciated. Boy, it's, uh, I mean, I'm, I've been, you know, you told me about this project. I said, man, I just wanted to be part of it, first of all, which is good people with good ideas, you know, and, and, and good vibe. And, you know, just to, you know, Jiu Jitsu need you guys. And um, I'm glad and honored to be part of it and count on me all the time. And, you know, one more round all the time, everywhere, all day. Yeah, thank you, man. That's ditto back at you. I mean, we're, we're honored to be here. Pleasure to come down here. So thanks for everything. Really appreciate it. All of the brother.